Well, here's the image we're going to be working with today. Uh, it's a shot of what looks like just a beautiful day uh, out in nature, beautiful path, nice lighting. But the image is really flat and uh, very low contrast. So what we're going to do is work in the LAB color space um, to get this image looking about a thousand percent better. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert to the LAB color space and you get to that. Now I click on edit here, the choice is going to be uh, off the screen so I will go ahead and click on edit but just so you can see it as it comes up. Edit, convert to profile. Now when you convert to profile you're going to want to choose this, the LAB, LAB color space. Go ahead and find that on the menu. It's a uh, up in the top in my case and simply click OK and now your image is converted and we can start getting into, there it is, LAB8. We can start getting into our work here on this image. Uh, okay, so first thing to do is when you get into the LAB color space, uh, get into your layers and call up curves. Your curves dialog box is going to be your real big friend on this one. And let's see, right, we got a little bit of the image in here. Okay, now we've got three channels in the LAB color space. Lightness, L for lightness, and then A for channel A, and B for channel B. Now how does this work? It's, it's quite different from uh, the RGB color space, which uh, you may very well be used to working with. But, um, you get into this, we're going to have to get into this. This is the color wheel and this very much uh, explains very well what's going on with uh, the LAB color space. L is for lightness, this is just the, the brightness of your pixels. And uh, then the A channel, see they've decided to do this. If you take your, take your, your average spectrum that you might see up in the sky, uh, it really varies the colors go from one to the other according to the energy from lowest energy to highest energy, the old Roijabiv, which you may remember from high school, Roijabiv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, from lowest to highest energy. And this is the way you arrange at least this color wheel. There are different versions of this. Uh, but yeah, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all the way around the circle. So the LAB folks decided to uh, break this spectrum up into two channels of color. The A channel, which covers only magentas and greens and, you know, shades of those, but only magentas kind of reddish to green. And channel B covers yellows and blues. Okay. So let's get back into our image. And we've got the curves dialog box up here. Kind of bring this down a little bit better here so we can all see. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so in the lightness channel, I don't want to work on that right now. You can still see a good part of the image over here. I want to bring up the A channel. You remember the A channel is the reds, magentas, and the greens. Now what I want to do, the whole part of, uh, point of this is to ramp up the contrast. So the best way to do that is just steepen up the curve here. And I want the curve to be steepest in the area where I'm getting uh, the biggest punch here in the histogram. So this is the A channel, magenta's greens. Let's just look what happens if I pull this over. What, it brings more greens in. So this area under here is the cool part of that pair, which would be the greens. And as I slide this over, you get a bigger volume of that, so you get more greens. Obviously, the opposite is red magenta. If I ramp up the volume of the red magenta area, that comes in. But what I'm going to do is I want this curve to be steep, but I want it to be even, even distribution of both colors in this pair. So what I'm going to do is come over here, one, two, three, and I'm going to bring it right up to there. Now that's going to ramp in a lot of greens, which I don't really want, but now what I'm going to do is exactly the same adjustment with the magenta one, one, two, three, and I'm going to bring it down right there. They balance out exactly, but the colors begin what they call separating. 
In other words, they're getting a uh, greater contrast. Now, I will now do this in the B channel, which will be the yellows and blues, and exactly the same thing. I'm just going to steepen up that curve right in the middle and give it a real good one. There are plenty of times in LAB where you can, you can actually really, really ramp the heck out of these things, as you would not want to do possibly in RGB. Now, here's one, and I might want to go back to the A channel, but see, the steepest part of my curve is sort of in here, and I, I, I want it a little bit more focused in here, so now I'm not looking at the exactly where the points are, but I'm looking at where the steepness is, and I'm also looking at the image here. I want to get a nice balance. That'll do. Let me go back to the A and see what's going on there. That's pretty good. The steepness is pretty much right in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the lightness channel, and this will be just the relative brightness of each pixel. So we're going to go ahead and separate that out, but maybe not as much. I'm still going to put a nice S-curve in, and that looks darn good. That looks darn good. Wow. Okay. It's much better already, you can see. Uh, if we look at the before and after so far, there's the, bef there's the before, there's the after. We've made a dramatic improvement already, but I think we can do even better. And what we're going to do now is do a little sharpening. But we're going to do our sharpening in the LAB color space. So what we're going to do. We are going to get back into channels. Click on channels. When we do our sharpening, we don't want to be sharpening on a, uh, channel A or channel B. These are the color channels, and you don't want to sharpen color. You get a, a lot of uh, aberrations creeping in. The sharpening is all about the brightness of the pixels, and this is the fantastic part about LAB, is that you can choose only the lightness channel. So you're going to sharpen only the brightness of the pixels, and that's the whole point anyway. But now I do want to see my full color image, so don't click the eyeball. Thank no, I'm wrong. Click on lightness, make that active. That's right. Click on this eyeball so you can see all your layers, your full color image, but only the lightness channel is um, active. Okay. Now what we're going to do is do our sharpening and make sure we remember we're only on the lightness channel. Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And here we go. Let's get down to our image. Let's bring in the Unsharp Mask. Uh, now, I've done something a little bit different on this Unsharp Mask. We can still see a good part of the image there. Um, usually what we might be used to doing is pulling up the amount and make sure the, make sure the radius is down about one or two and blah, 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 do our sharpening that way. Go ahead and play around like that. The threshold always on zero. Keep your radius up around, I don't know, one. I don't know, up to you. See what it looks like. But usually way down here, and then the amount up. But another thing you can really experiment with and get great results out of is doing it exactly the opposite way. And you can really bring it up. Click the preview. I don't know. See how that's doing. I kind of like that right there. So experiment with uh, uh, sharpening and moving your sliders either at this angle or at that angle. Okay, I'll go ahead and take that. So there's a brief introduction to um, ramping up contrast in an image in the LAB color space as well as sharpening in the LAB color space. If you're going to do any serious sharpening work, um, LAB is the only color space to be in. Now, the final thing we have to remember before we end all this here is you get back to your channels, good. You make sure all of them are active. Um, yeah, <laughs> you want to get back to where you started from, really. 
Okay. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Appreciate you watching. I love the LAB color space for increasing contrast and flat images, and it is always the thing I use for sharpening images. Beautiful color space. Excellent. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.